Okay, everybody, let's welcome the winners of Live Golf UK by JCB. We are joined by Legion 13, Caleb Surratt, Kieran Vincent, the individual champion, John Rahm, our captain, and Tyrrell Hatton. Welcome, guys, and congratulations. Let's start with the obvious question. This win, John, has to be somewhat bittersweet for you and the way that it went down. Can you just talk through how you're feeling right now? <sighs> Yeah, it's it, obviously you always want to win, right? So obviously you want you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend, you know, missing a putt for for that happening for me, right? So yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a unusual situation that I don't think any of us are used to, right? Uh, team wins, I win individually, but you know, still. You know, having so much respect for Terrell, somebody who's a good friend and somebody I've experienced a lot with, to you know, can't really celebrate because I still feel for him uh, for from you know for finishing like that. So uh, personally, obviously, I would say very relieved uh, having top ten pretty much every time I've teed it up and giving myself plenty of time uh, chances to win, and you know, finally getting it done feels feels very good. Very um, feels like I got a lot of weight off my shoulders on that one. Tyrrell, does having the team win alongside this soften the blow at all, or does it hurt just as bad? Um, to be honest, no. I mean, yeah, it's, it's obviously still pretty raw for, for me as an individual. Um, it's it's kind of hard to put that to one side. I mean, as a team... Well, golf is generally an individual sport, and ultimately, like your individual results will reflect what happens within the team. So, um, I'm really happy for the the guys to have a, a solid weekend and for us to win our fourth event as a team. But it doesn't change how I feel towards my own individual performance, and um, yeah, I mean it. It sucks to to bogey the last in front of your your home crowd to effectively miss out on a on a playoff. Um, so yeah, that's um, unfortunately the the reality of my situation at the moment. So you guys just secured your fourth win. You guys are having a dominance that is similar to the four aces the first year. You guys are winning relentlessly. Can you just talk a little about? A little bit, Caleb, about what it feels like to be on such a dominating team. Yeah, I mean it. Uh, you know, it it kind of it kind of softens the blow a lot on like how you're playing individually if you don't have it going. Like today, I was really grinding all day, and uh, you know, in, in kind of the middle of the pack. And you know, when I look up on the leaderboard, it's it's a lot less about where I'm at and kind of how I can help contribute to the team on the way in. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's uh it's pretty awesome. I think. Part of the reason why we're you know, we're winning like this and have been and hopefully will in the future is, you know, having this younger team um, and guys that, you know, me and Kieran who are, are probably not on John and Tyrrell's level yet, we're extremely hungry and, uh, you know, in no way are we ever satisfied. So we're always striving to get better. And I think um, we have four guys with that mindset that uh, hope I think it's going to add up to a lot of success. And Kieran, how does this win feel for you? Yeah, I mean, we won <laughs> four times. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to beat that. I don't think, or at least I don't know how many other teams have done that in a season. So um, whether it's a record setting or close to it, I think this is this is pretty cool. Um, and so to be part of that team that's that's kind of record-breaking or and, you know, just as four new guys into this league, I think we, we're kind of taking it with open arms and, and running and enjoying this race that we're running right now. And so, yeah, I think we're we're excited and obviously... Super thankful for another good week with these guys. And, John, you alluded that you had some troubles or off course this year, and this win really means a lot to you because of that. Can you just talk a little bit about what you told your son uh, before you left to come here and what you get to tell him when you come home? <laughs> well, it's also, first of all, it's my first win since Masters last year, right? So a little bit longer than I would have liked. Uh, especially because I feel like I've put myself in position many times during that year. Uh, and, yeah, leaving right before I went to Valderrama, Kelly was telling me how Kepa said that, 
he wanted me to bring a trophy home. And the funny thing is, uh, I, I I play the Queenwood Cup in London with a good friend of mine. It's a pro. It's a pro member at Queenwood Country Club, uh, and we won it. So I kind of made the joke to Kelly that well, at least I'm bringing some type of trophy home. Uh, and I felt like I played good enough in Valderrama. I didn't get it done and uh, put myself in position today and, and, and played the back nine I needed, minus 17, which isn't more than, than a misread, unfortunately, for me. But um, really happy that I got it done. You know, did what I needed to do on Friday, which is something that I really I feel like I haven't done this season, right? Uh, take the lead or should a low one to put myself in a really good position to where maybe I can afford a bet, a bet Saturday, right? And uh, instead of playing catch up for the entire weekend, I was kind of in position and uh, learned from the mistakes I made yesterday. I adjusted and, and played a fantastic round of golf today that, you know, I really, not, that there was not a lot that went wrong, made a lot of good swings out there and, and had a lot of fun, which is kind of how you want it. And at the end of that, now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them is, is, Feels good to say that it's coming home. And last one for me, you're heading to the Olympics next to go compete for Team Spain. Does uh, These last couple weeks, you've been playing a lot of golf. How do you feel heading into next week, and does this win give you some confidence? Gives, it gives me a lot of confidence. A relief, like I said. Uh, had it gone next week and perform well again and give myself a chance going into the last six, seven holes, uh, maybe might have felt different if I hadn't won, but haven't gotten over it. I think I would approach a moment like that with a little bit more confidence and, and, and especially after learning from what I could have done better today. So it's uh, something I really look forward to. It's going to be a fantastic week to, a week to, um, to share with, with David, you know, being another live member, a player that's become a really close friend of mine. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully one of us has a chance to get the gold. I love it. Mike? So, John, I think I've been at every one of your – press conferences this year, both here and, and the majors, and you've taken a lot of questions about not winning whatever. <clears throat> Do you feel like that? I don't know if it ever bothered you, A, and if it did, do you feel like these, it'll quiet the critics now? It never bothered me because I don't think any of you guys would say something I wasn't already thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm my worst critic, so... Uh, when it comes to that, no, it really bothered me. And for the most part, a lot of it was true, right? I hadn't won in a while, and I get, I'd given myself a chance, and I didn't get it done. Uh, I tried to use it as motivation, mm -hmm. right? And I told myself that if I put myself, myself in that position again, I was going to try my hardest to take advantage of it. So I'm glad I did. Uh, for the most part, I feel like I felt like from what I've read in media is that I guess maybe my play – hasn't reflected how good I really felt about my game, right? I felt like I was playing good, and I guess top 10s is not enough anymore, even when I didn't feel my best in some of the weeks, right? So uh, just because I had poor performances at the Masters and the PGA, I think I was taking a lot of a lot of criticism just for two weeks on how I was really playing and how I really felt. Uh, so for really good to actually perform the way I did on the weekend last week and carry that over and, and win it. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy about it, but... Um, you know, you almost, when you're in the public eye, you're going to get criticized. So uh, you almost have to use it as fuel to, to motivate yourself. And you were pretty emotional right after today. Um, was it because of the family? Was what was kind of going through your your mind? And, and were, are you surprised that it was as emotional a win for you today? No, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, it's... Again, it hasn't been the easiest, uh, and I really can't remember many wins when Kelly and the kids weren't there. Mm -hmm. I think it was only one Spanish Open, and I think that's it. So uh, I'm really happy that I had my, my first live golf win, and under normal circumstances, Kelly would have been here, uh, but unfortunately, she couldn't. And uh, at this point, I'm, I'm just happy that in one week I'll be able to, to share the moment with them and celebrate. Um, I think that was the most emotional part of things, right? Luckily, every time we've had a we've had a child, this is come with a win around that time or shortly after. So, you know, I'm glad that I got this one before before she came out. And, and Terrell, when you joined Liv, you you knew the format. You knew. I I, I don't know if you thought that this 
kind of scenario might play out, and if it did, you know, what kind of emotions might you have? Uh, is it is it what you kind of expected when you joined Live that this is this is kind of a weird reality that we have out here? Um, well, I mean. I think until you actually experience it, you don't know how you're going to react. Um, I don't think how I'm feeling now is any different to how any other player in, in the league would be feeling. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know what else to say to that. Was there one shot out there, um, whether it was the last putt or or maybe the double uh, that you would like to have had back? Um, yeah, I mean, the double on on six is not ideal. Um, when I looked up for my final look, I couldn't see the pin. I completely lost my bearings, and I probably should have backed off there. Um, and then, yeah, obviously bogey in the last, but, like, a bit of perfect tee shot over the line that we're all meant to hit and um, yeah I'd, I'd say probably the 18th is one hole that I think 54 players would like to see change before we come back next year um, I don't think that's the tee shot that I hit there deserves to be in the semi and I'm playing a guessing game of if it's going to come out with no spin or with spin um, obviously I guessed wrong and it leaves it in a really really tricky position to two putt and um Unfortunately, wasn't able to to hold that five footer to force a playoff. So, um, yeah, it sucks. John, I, I did want to ask you about your tee shot at twelve. Did you feel like that was the time? You, you know, you needed to be aggressive there. Try, I tried to stay as aggressive as I could throughout the day, um, but yeah, I had a chance, right? Uh, Knowing that I tied the lead on 10, had a good chance on 11, you have to assume that the guys behind you are going to make birdie, at least one birdie on 12 and 13, right? So uh, I wanted to give myself a good chance. With today's pin, you could afford to miss it left and give yourself a decent birdie chance. So I just decided to be aggressive and uh, hit a good tee shot that luckily stayed just inside the, the rough line and ended up in a really good spot for an eagle putt. So... Uh, I think I did a good job at picking my spots today because I could have gone for the green on 10, and I didn't end up with a birdie and then decided to be aggressive there with the three wood, which can't carry the water, so I had to keep it left, and, and, and it paid off, right? And then the three wood after that on the tee and the five wood on 13. I mean, those is, that's probably a key moment of the tournament, right, getting those two birdies. Um, while they hadn't really finished 12 yet is, is important. And, and Caleb and Karen, I, I'm just wondering how much – you looked at the leaderboard today, especially from a team standpoint, but also you, you, you saw that John and Terrell were kind of neck and neck there. Did you? Uh, how much did it cross your mind that they may have to have a playoff uh, for the individual title, or were you just focused solely on the team at that point? Yeah, um, yeah, it was definitely interesting. There was a, I kind of got two parts to that answer, but it, it was interesting at one point, like they were both tied. And, uh, like, we were right there tied on the team side, and I was, like, thinking about how awkward it would be if they had a playoff and it was a team playoff. <laughs> but Because uh, I had never thought of that scenario in my head. But, yeah, I mean, when you're looking at the leaderboard and you see, um, you know, what our team score is and then, you know, how, how these two guys were playing, it just makes you think of how great of an opportunity me and Kieran have to learn and, um, you know, compete with – with, with the two best players, arguably. So, um, you know, that's a that's a blessing in itself. And it was it's pretty great golf to watch. Yeah, I'm. it was funny. I told my caddy on hole number, uh, our first hole of the day, I looked up and I was like, who do you think is going to win today, John or Tyrrell? And it basically came down to that because I knew the guys were going to come out hot and firing, and and they did. And so it was, it was super awesome to watch. And, yeah, I think obviously me and, me and Caleb were observing it regularly but also we're looking at the team standings like hey like they may be dueling out something like we need to do our job and I think we even though it may not look like we had flashy scores today we we still put in in good scores for what we had with this week and so I'm proud of Caleb and obviously the rest of the guys 
Uh, John, looking ahead to the Olympics, um, obviously you will have spoken to previous people who've won gold medals. What would it mean for you if you sort of obviously you've won here, you've won majors? Where would it stand in your career if you came away with a gold medal next week? I, I've thought about that question. I've been asked that question. I, I really don't have the perfect answer because the Olympics, unfortunately, were not a possibility for any of us till 2016, right? So, and ever since then, there's been two editions, and with me not being able to go to Tokyo because of COVID, I might have been a little better watching that. So, um, hard to position myself on where, or the magnitude or something like that may be, but to be able to, to say that you have a gold medal, or an Olympic medal for that matter, is something that a very small group of people in all human history can say. So. I don't think it might have the recognition it it could have yet, but in the future, this may be one of those things that means a lot more than we are aware of right now. So just to be able to add to a Spanish medal count would be absolutely amazing. So I can't put it in a ranking based on, on majors and things like that yet. Uh, but if I were to get it done on Sunday, ask me that same question, I'll be able to tell you, because uh, you can usually tell on, on the, that 18th grade how, how it feels. Uh, John and Cyril, uh, obviously you guys made a big decision at the start of the year to come over here. Um, as you near the end of your first season with Liv, how do you reflect on uh, what you have joined, what is the outlook for the future, and, and how happy are you with the decision you made? Uh, to be fair, I wasn't listening to that question. <laughs> Sorry. How, how do you reflect on the decision of joining Liv? Uh, we, we both decided to join you a little bit later, right? You're like the end of the year. Why don't you go first? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give, get, gain time by giving you go first. Um, well, it's, it's a different scenario for us because I signed and instantly tried to recruit him. Uh, he can be quite hard headed, so it's a lot of insisting to try to get it to, to join the team. Um, but again, you. I signed in, I think it was in November, December, and faced, uh, faced enough criticism for, for doing so. Uh, then we got really busy with building the team and the brand and actually having a team, uh, which that in itself took a lot of time, uh, and then trying to get ready for Mayakoba. So, you know, there was a lot of question marks when we started the year, uh, but asking Rai, I have to say I'm extremely satisfied with, with how things have gone, right? Uh, had I won today or not, we have a, we have a great team great group of people together, not only us, but everybody around the team that, that makes it so much fun. You know, we started the first week with a win uh, and then followed it with three more and two of us here have won individual titles. So I really don't think there's going to be much to be negative about. It's been, a, in my experience, a fantastic experience. It's been a wonderful year. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and, you know, just looking forward to hopefully finishing the year with with more wins and, and you know, really ending it with a bang. Um, I, well, I think the, the, the easiest thing to say is this year was always going to be a, a learning experience. Um, going into something completely new for us. Um, obviously, we knew exactly what it was like on the PJ Tour and DP World Tour and, and things, but... Um, no, I think it's been a fun year. We've been fortunate to go to some pretty cool places around the world and um, play some nice golf courses and um, enjoy cool moments as a team. Um, and then as an individual, for me to, to win in Nashville last month was a huge relief just to, to win again as a professional because um, it had been such a long time. So... To, to have that experience and and do it, I think it was the the best turnout um, attendance wise uh, for live in the US. So to it was fun to play a tournament that had a had a really good atmosphere. And I think you know each year that goes by, I think we'll see more and more fans coming to to tournaments and creating a fun atmosphere for us players to play in and. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's kind of what we want. Um, we want a good atmosphere, and you know the crowds this week really were 
were fantastic. Um, I'm not sure what the, the true number was, but it felt like there was a lot of people out there. And I think the exciting thing is that it can get bigger and bigger. So um, it's fun to be a part of. Uh, and John, you're chasing Wacko at the top of the um, the season standings. Uh, how do you rate Wacko as a as a competitor, and, and what would it mean to you to to lift that season title? I don't know how far away I'm now, but he still had a fantastic Sunday and finished tied for second. So I didn't really catch up as much as I would have liked. Uh, I mean, he has two wins, two wins, right? Yeah. Two wins in an incredible season so far. Um, he's a fantastic player that. Clearly, last year he didn't have the year he thought he could have had. Uh, could have been better, and at some point in the postseason, figure something out because he finished the year by winning overseas, and then continued that that great momentum and in, into live golf, winning early on a couple of times, right? So, and not only that, I mean the wins, the weeks he's not winning, he's pretty much always up there. So uh, he's a great competitor, a great great golfer, somebody that that has all the tools to to keep putting himself in, in, in great position and giving himself chances. So hopefully I can keep doing my job and and do it well and keep uh, keep putting myself in a good position, hopefully get more wins. Uh, and maybe we have a nice little showdown going on, on the last day on, on Chicago to, for the individual title. But whoever gets it done so far has been an incredible year for, for either one. Hi. A couple of questions for John. John, I've had some chats with Kieran and he always talks about how good you are as a captain, how motivating you are, how much knowledge you keep imparting. Is it a lie? No, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, I mean, David has played a lot of golf with you, he says that in, in Arizona as well, and he's going to be your kind of partner at Olympics. I don't know if you followed his quotes today or not. He He, he really played great golf till the last couple of holes. Uh, how are you going to mentor him uh, in Paris? <laughs> well, thank you for the for the kind words, Kieran. Uh, I, I try to be myself, that's all I can say, right? Uh, whenever they ever have a question, I try to be as honest as I can. Um, and with, with David, I think it's a little bit of a different dynamic since we're both Spanish. And I'll say the Spanish love language can be very different. So what we do to each other is give each other about as hard a time as we can and make fun of each other as much as we can. And that's how we get each other ready, basically. <laughs> when we play together and when we're together, you, you, like if we had subtitles, you would not believe the things we're telling each other, right? Always with respect and knowing that we're both kidding. But there's been plenty of times where he's asked for my advice and, and I've given it to him, right? He's, he's a fantastic player, still very young, very young with – an incredible amount of firepower on the golf course, right? So, uh, you know, he's in the process of learning how to how to handle that and how to use it. But when he gets things going, he's, he's very tough to beat. I mean, he's he's responsible for some of the most impressive rounds of golf I've seen in Arizona, right? Uh, he shot a 61 at Whisper Rock, missing two putts inside five feet, where I still can't believe somebody shot that score on the day that we had. Uh, and, and many other chances, right? Uh, I'm hoping, you know, next week can be one of those because it's a golf course where you just have to play incredibly well. It doesn't matter. If it's in the conditions it usually is, there's no hiding. Every part of your game needs to be good. And uh, when you have the length that C has, you can take advantage of certain holes a little bit better than most. So hopefully, you know, I'm looking forward to to seeing him do well. And uh, hopefully we both end up in the medals. Uh, if not, and if I don't, I'll love, I'll love to see him get there. And the second question I wanted to ask you was, given Kelly's background as a javelin thrower and a track and field athlete, <clears throat> are you first going to watch javelin throw at Olympics if you get a chance? And secondly, do you guys discuss your sports and have you learned something from her sport uh, that you have tried to apply to golf? <laughs> Well, she's done javelin and tennis. Tennis for the mo most of her life when she was younger. So there's parts of the process that you can learn from. Uh, but I consider myself extremely lucky to have found somebody like her because when when I turned pro, 
there was no hesitation on her on doing what needed to be done to help me out. And she understood what the process of a professional athlete looks like. So I can tell you right now, even when, when we're home now with the kids, she'll be the first one to tell me, if you're going to spend all this time practicing and improving yourself and treatments and this and the other thing where you're not spending maybe as much time with the kids and, and her that, than we could, you better go and win basically. You better go and, and, and perform, right? So it's her own little way of, of, of making me laugh in that sense and, and knowing what to say to, to motivate me as well and, and what needs to be done to, to make sure I'm keeping a regimented lifestyle to become better. Not, not specifically sports-wise, um, but she just has uh, always understood the process and has made my life a lot easier in that sense. Um, I, I don't know what stadium they're, they're doing javelin throwing, so I don't know how far we are and how easily we'll be able to commute because Paris is it's not easy to move around, So, and when the dates are. So I, I said right now I know tomorrow and Tuesday towards the afternoon, evening, uh, a lot of swimming finals are going on, so uh, we might be able to, to go and watch that. Um, the head rental house we have is, I think, 20 to 30 minutes from there. So, you know, if traffic isn't too bad, it seems a little bit more doable. But in my mind, I also want to see if I could see Carlos and Nadal compete. compete. Um, you know, it, it would be nice, but I don't know if they're playing while we have days off and, or any, you know, Spanish national basketball team or a couple others. Other friends that I have in the Olympics would be nice. But while you're competing, I don't really know how much free time we have to be able to go and watch. The schedule is probably not very cooperative. I, I asked you because the best javelin thrower in the world in men's right now is an Indian called Neeraj Chopra. I don't know if you have heard about him, but he's the, he's the gold medalist and, and really good. <laughs> I have not. No, it, I, even she doesn't follow in javelin. She doesn't follow javelin that close. She was never that serious about it, so I couldn't really, I don't think she follows it in that way. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Congratulations. Appreciate all of you. Good luck at the Olympics, and we'll see the rest of you in Greenbrier. Thank you. Woo!